From around the globe, it's theCUBE, with digital coverage of AWS reInvent 2020. Sponsored by Intel, AWS, and our community partners. Hello everyone, welcome back to theCUBE's virtual coverage of AWS reInvent 2020. I'm John Furrier, your host. We're the Cube Virtual, we're not there in person, but we're going to do our, our job with the best remote we possibly can. We're wall-to-wall -wall coverage on the AWS reInvent site, as well as on demand on the Cube new 365 platform. Uh, we got some great power panel analysts here to dig in and discuss partner day for AWS, what it means for the customer, what it means for the enterprise, the buyer, the people trying to figure out who to buy from and possibly new partners. How can they re-engineer and reinvent their company to partner better with Amazon, take advantage of the benefits, but ultimately get more sales. We got Tim Crawford, Sarbeet Joal, and Dave Vellante, friends of theCUBE. We all know them on Twitter. You guys, uh, the posse, the CUBE posse, thanks for coming on. I'm sure it's going to hey be guys. entertaining. And <laughs> Wish <laughs> we were hanging out, drinking beer. Oh my gosh, that'd be awesome. It's great to be on theCUBE again. I'm glad to be here. Guys, great to have you on. I wanted to bring you on because it's a unique cross-section of perspectives. And this is not this is from the end user perspective. And I, Tim, you've been talking about the CXOs for years. You're an expert in this. Sarbi, you're taking more from a cloud perspective. You've seen the under the hood what's happening. Let's all put it together. If you're a partner, Okay, first question to the group. I'm a partner. Do I win with Amazon or do I lose with Amazon? First question. Tim, you wanna go? Yeah, I'll, <laughs> I'll jump in. I'll say, you know, regardless, you win. You win with Amazon. I think there's a lot of opportunity for partners with Amazon. Um, you have to pick your battles though. You have to find the right places where you can carve out a space that isn't too congested but also isn't um, really kind of fettered with a, a number of incumbents. And so if you're looking at the enterprise space, I think that there is a ton of potential because let's face it, Amazon doesn't have all of the services packaged in a way that the enterprise can consume. And I think that leaves a lot of fertile ground for SIs and ISVs to jump in and be able to connect those dots. So I'd say it's win-win. Star B, if you're like a, a we saw Cohesity on stage, Jesse's coming out talking about chai, uh, the chips and data. If you're a, a, like a, a, a vendor, an ISV, you're a startup or you're a company trying to reinvent, how do you see Amazon as a partner? Yeah, I see Amazon as a big market uh, for me. You know, it, it's a, it increased my sort of TAM, if you will. Um, uh, the one big sort of uh, trend is that the lines between technology providers and service providers are blurred. Actually, it's flipping, I believe. It will flip at some time. That we will put, consume technology from service providers. They are becoming technology providers, actually. They are not just being pipe and power kind of cloud. They are purely software, um, very high, sort of highly constructed machinery, if you will, behind the scenes with software. That's what Amazon is, uh, a, a big machine, if you will. And you can leverage that and then you can uh, help your customers achieve their business goals as a partner. I think it's, it's a win-win. It's a and the role of actually SIs is changing, I believe. Um, SIs were, I, I thought they were getting a little sidetracked by the service providers, but now they have to actually change their roles the way they, they used to get these you know, shrink wrap software and then install and configure and all that stuff. Now it's in cloud uh, and they, they have to focus a little more on services. And, and some of the SIs are building tools for multi-cloud consumption and all that. So uh, things are changing uh, under, under this whole big shift to cloud. I mean, I think if you're an SI and you're you know, lifting and shifting, you make a few bucks and helping people do that and deal with the tech. But I think where the real money is the business transformation. And, and you find the technology's there, it's, it's another tool in the bag, but if you can change your operating model, that's going to drive telephone numbers to the bottom line. That's a boardroom discussion. And that's where the real dollars are for SIs. That's why, that's why guys like Accenture are leading, in, in leading into the cloud big time. All right, so yeah, then, go ahead, Tim. I think, you, I think you're absolutely right, Dave. I think that's, that's one aspect that we have to kind of call out is you can be one of those partners that is focused on the transaction and you'll be successful doing that. But you're absolutely right. If you focus on the long game, I think that is just, like I said, completely fertile ground. And there are a lot of opportunities because historically Amazon was a, was a Lego parts 
uh, type of cloud provider, right? They provided you with the basic building blocks, which is great for web scale and startups, not so good for enterprise. And so now Amazon is starting to, to put together and package parts so it's more consumable by enterprises, but you still need that help. And as Sarpeet just mentioned, you also have to consider that Amazon's not the only aspect that you're going to be using. You're going to be using other providers too. And so I think this again is where partners they pick a primary and then they also bring in the others where appropriate. All right, I want to get into this whole uh, riff I had with Jerry Chen on day one. Uh, he came on a, on the uh, special fireside chat with me and we talked about um, the cloud errors before cloud, Amazon, and now I'll call it post COVID because we're seeing this kind of whole new, you know, in the cloud kind of generation. And so he said, okay, this is pre-cloud. Then you had Amazon generation where it's lift and shift, a lot of hybrid, and then you have everything's in the cloud, like a snowflake kind of thing. And he kind of called it the reptiles versus the amphibians. You're on sea, you're inland, you're hybrid, and then you're, you're in the water. I mean, so, so he kind of went on, took that another level, meaning that, okay, there's always going to be hybrid, but there's a unique differentiation from being all in the cloud. You're seeing different patterns. Uh, Amazon certainly has an advantage. You see DevOps Guru, that's just mining the data of their entire platform and saying, okay, yeah, do this. There's advantages for being in the cloud that aren't available hybrid. So amphibian on land and sea hybrid, and then in the cloud. How do you guys see that? If you're a partner, you want to be on the new generation, what's the opportunity to capture value? Yes, hybrid certainly coexists, but in the new era. You remember Scott McNeely used to talk about car makers and car dealers, he, and of course son's gone, but he used to say, we want to be a car maker. It's car dealers, they got big houses and big boats, but we're going to be a car maker. <laughs> well, I think it's some similarities here. I mean, I think there's a lot of money to be made as a, as a car dealer, uh, but you see companies like Dell, HPE, you know, they want to be car makers, obviously Google and, and Microsoft, but there aren't going to be a lot of successful, really big car makers in this game. Yeah, I, I believe, I believe, uh, I always call it Amazon is a maker's cloud, right? So they are very developer friendly. Um, they were very developer friendly for startups, um, um, uh, as Tim said earlier, but now they are very developer friendly and operations friendly now, actually in a way uh, for enterprises, I believe. And uh, the, 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 well, the Jerry, Jerry Chen's uh, sort of, uh, are you all, all in cloud or are you sitting just in the dry land right now? I think every sort of uh, organization is in a different sort of uh, mature at different maturity level, but I think we are go all going towards a technology consumption as a service. Mostly I think it will be off-prem, it can be on-prem in future because of uh, edge and all that. And on, on that note, uh, I think edge will be dominated by uh, tier one cloud providers like crazy people who think edge will be dominated by telcos and all that. I think uh, yeah. they're just uh, smoking in the if, mirrors. If, and if I may, <laughs> I if, I may if, <laughs> if I may interject for a second, uh, for the folks yeah. watching that might not be uh, old enough to know who Scott McNeely is. He's the founder <laughs> of Sun Microsystems, <laughs> which was bought yeah. by Oracle years ago. Yeah, basically because mini computers. Dave, there's a lot of young kids out there that don't even know who Scott McNeely no. is. But remember. No, do your homework. Scott you, you have to know who Scott McNeely is. Scott McNeely, McNeely is also said, and because Bill Gates was dominant, Microsoft owns the the tires and the gas too, and they want to own the road. So remember, Microsoft was dominating at that time. So yeah. Tim, I th gas yeah, is I th data, is that the, I mean, Amazon might have know, everything there. I was going to go back to the, to the comment, you know, McNeely came out with some really, really good analogies over his tenure um, at Sun. And, you know, Sun had some great successes, but unfortunately, Cloud is not as simplistic as buying a car and having the dealership and the ecosystem of gas and tires and the rest. You have to think about the whole journey and that journey is incredibly complicated, especially for the enterprise that's coming from legacy footprints, monolithic application stacks and trying to understand how to make that transition. It's almost, it's almost in a way more analogous to you're used to riding a bike and now you're going to operate a semi. And so how do you start to put all of the pieces into place to be able to make that transition? And it's not trivial. You have to figure out how your culture changes, how your processes changes. There are a lot of connected parts. It's not as simple as the ecosystem of tires and gas. 
we have to think about how that data stream fits in with other data streams, where analytics are going to be done. What about tying back to that system of record that is going to stay on a legacy platform? Oh, and by the way, some of that has to still stay on-prem. It can't move to the cloud yet. So we have this really complicated, diverse environment that yeah. we have to manage and it's only getting more complicated. And I think that's where the opportunity comes in for the SIs and ISVs is yeah. step into that, understand that journey, understand the transitions. I don't believe that enterprises, at least in the near term, let alone short term, will be all in cloud. I think that that's more of a fantasy than reality. There is a hybrid yeah. state that that is going to be transitory for some period of time. And that's where the big opportunity is. I think you're right on Tim. I think just to double down on that point, just to bring that to another level is Dave, you remember back in the days when PCs were the boom, many computers were most client server was just getting started. There was a whole hype cycle on hard drives, right? Hard drives yep. were the thing. Now, if you look at today, there's more observability startups than I could count, right? So to Tim's point, this monolithic breakdown and componentizing, decomposing monolithic apps or environments with microservices is complex. So to me, um, the, the thing that I see is that, that I can relate to is when I was breaking in in the 80s, you had the mainframes as being the young gun. I'm like, okay, mainframes are old, that's monolithic, client servers a different paradigm. Then you had uh, PCs and internet networking. I think all that change is happening so fast right now. It's not like over a 10 years, to Tim's point, it's like, Mainframes to iPhones is happening in like a three years. Right? Imagine right. crunching all that complexity and change down to a short window. I think but Amazon the, has kind of brought that to, I'm just riffing on that, but that's- Yeah, I'm you're absolutely right, John. But I think there's another piece and we can use a very specific example to, to show this. Another piece that we have to look at is we're trying to simplify that environment. And so a good place to simplify that is when we look at serverless and specifically around databases. You know, historically I had to pick the database architecture that the applications would write on. Then I have to have the infrastructure underneath and manage that appropriately so that I have both the performance as well as security, as well as architecture. And I have to scale that as needed. Today, you can get database as a service and not have to worry about the underpinnings. You just worry about the applications and how those data streams connect to other data streams. And so that's the direction that I think things are going is and we see this across the enterprise. We're looking for those packaged, packaged might be a, a generalized term, but we're looking for a more packaged scenario and opportunity for enterprises rather than just the most basic building blocks. We have to start putting together the, the preformed applications and then use those as larger chunks. And this is the opportunity for SIs. As I was, I was talking before about business transformation. If you take, take Tim's database example, you don't need somebody anymore to you know, set up your database, to tune it. I mean, that's becoming autonomous. But if you think about the way data pipelines work and the way organizations are structured, where everything goes into this monolithic data lake or, and, and, and it's like generic content coming in, the generic data where the business owner has to get in line and beg a data scientist or a quality engineer or to, to ingest a new data source and, it's just like the old data warehouse days where I think there's tremendous opportunities yeah. for SIs to go and completely re-architect the data model. Sarbjeet, this is something you and I were talking about on Twitter. It's, it's why I like what Snowflake's doing. It's kind of what AWS is trying to do with, uh, with the elastic glue views, but there's a whole business transformation opportunity for SIs, which I just think is, is huge number. Well, let's- I, th I think ahead, we Sarbjeet. all talk, go ahead, sorry. No, finish your thought. Yeah, I, th I think we all talk about, we know all, we all agree on one thing that the future is hybrid for at least for next, you know, 10 years, if not more. Um, uh, and hybrid is hard. Uh, the data proximity is uh, very important. That means um, latency between different workloads, right? That's super important. And I, 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 I talk about this on, all the time, almost in every conversation I have about, about um, in, in such scenario is that there are three types of applications every every enterprise has systems of record systems of systems of engagement and the systems of innovation and my theory of cloud consumption tells me that sooner or later systems of record will move into SaaS SaaS world that, that's how I see it uh, there's there's no other way around I believe and the systems of um, engagement or systems of uh, differentiation sometimes I call it 
they, they will leverage a lot of platforms as a service. And, and in that context, context, I've said it many times, that to be a best of the breed a platform as a service, you have to be best of the breed um, infrastructure as a service provider, and that's Amazon. And that is uh, that's also Azure to a certain extent, and then uh, and and Google is trying to do that too. So uh, the, the the feature sort of uh, uh, gap between number one cloud and two and three is pretty huge, I believe. I think uh, Amazon is is doing great. Uh, data democratization through serverless. I, I just love serverless for that. Serverless, I think is, a serverless, serverless will... is a winning formula. There's no doubt about it. Serverless, I totally agree. But I think yeah. one of the things that Amazon's done is they've taken serverless, they brought, they're putting all the IaaS in the chips and they're moving all the value up to the service layer, which gives them the advantage over others because everyone else is trying to compete down here. They're going to be purpose built. If you look at what Apple's doing with the chips and what Amazon's doing, they're going to kind of have this chip to chip scenario and then the middleware in between is the containerization, the microservices and Lambda. So if you're a developer, yeah, you pro just, it's programmable at that point. That could, that could be a lock spec, I think for Amazon. It, it absolutely could be John, but I think there, there's another aspect here that we have to touch on, especially as we think about partners and where the opportunities come in. And that is that we often talk about non-cloud to cloud, right? How to get from on-prem to cloud. But the piece that you also have to bring into the conversation is the edge to cloud continuum. And so I think if you start to look at some of the announcements this week from AWS, you start looking at some of the new instance types uh, that are very AI focused. You look at the two new form factors for outposts, which allows you to bring cloud to a smaller footprint within an on-premise premises situation, uh, different local zones, and then the other piece that I think is really interesting is, is their announcements around ECS and EKS anywhere, being able to take cloud and Kubernetes um, you know, across the board. And so the challenge here is, as I mentioned earlier, complexity is paramount. It's a concern for enterprises just moving to cloud. You start layering in the edge to cloud continuum and it just, it gets exponentially yeah, more yeah. complicated. Yeah. And so Amazon's not going to be the one to help you go through that, not because they can't, but frankly, just the scale of help that is going to be needed amongst enterprises is just not there. And so this is really where I think the opportunity lies for the SIs and ISVs and partners. Yeah, well, I you heard how I, Jassy defined uh, hybrid, John, in the article that you wrote when you did your one-on-one -on -one with him, Tim, and the in the analyst uh, call where you answered my question and then I want to bring in Antonio Neri's comment. But Jassy basically said, look, we see cloud, bring, we're going to bring AWS to the edge and we see data centers, this is another edge node. And Antonio Neri, after HPE's pretty good quarter, uh, came out and said, wow, we heard the public cloud provider talking about hybrid. Welcome, you know. Kind yeah, of welcome tone. to the party. Yeah, they were first to point <laughs> it. And then Gelsinger I mean, jumped on that big time. But yeah, I mean, look at hybrid, Tim nailed it. Complexity is the is the evil. Is friction is one friction area. If the if complexity can be mastered by the edge provider, closest to the customer, that's going to be valuable um, for partners. And anyone can do that. Amazon's going to have to continue to remove the friction in putting that together, which is why I'm nervous about their channel partners. Because if I'm a partner, I ask myself, how do I make money with Amazon? At the end of the day, it's money making, right? So how can I be successful? Am I going to sell more in the marketplace? Will the customer consume it through there? Is it friction or is it complex? So this notion of complexity and friction becomes a double-edged sword, Tim, on both sides. So we got five minutes left. Let's talk about the buyer yeah. side, complexity, yeah. so, friction. So you're absolutely right, John. And you know, the other thing that, that I would say is for the partner, you have to look beyond what Amazon is selling today. Look at where the customers are going. And, you know, Dave, I, th I think you and I were both in an analyst session with Andy Jassy several years ago, where one of the analysts asked the question, so can, you know, what's your perspective on hybrid cloud? And his response candidly was, well, we have this particular service. And really what he was talking to is a service that helps you onboard to Amazon's public cloud. There was, mm -hmm. there was not an acknowledgement of hybrid cloud at the time. But look at how things have changed just in a short few years. And I understand where, where Jassy's coming from, 
but this just exemplifies the fact that if you're a partner, you have to look beyond what Amazon is saying and think to how the customer is evolving, how the enterprise is evolving and get yourself ahead of them. That will position you best for both today and as you're building for the future. That's a great point. Dave, you know, complexity on buying, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a customer. You can throw me a marketplace all you want, but if I'm not going to be tied into my procurement, how I'm consuming technology, to Tim's point, Amazon isn't the only game in town. I got other suppliers. Yeah, well, certainly to, to, for some technology suppliers, they basically can bring their on-prem estate if it's big enough uh, into the cloud. Uh, you know, what is big enough? That's the big question here. You know, are guys like, you know, Red Hat's big enough. Okay, we know that. Nutanix, Pure, they're sort of the next layer down. Can they, do they have enough of a customer base that they can bring into the cloud, create that abstraction layer? And then you got the born in the cloud guys, Snowflake, Clumio are two good examples. Uh, so you've got the technology partners and then they're the SIs and consultants. And I, again, I see that as the really big opportunity as Tim points out, Amazon is acknowledging that hybrid is real in, in a newly defined way. They're going out to the edge. Fine, you want to call data center the edge. How are they going to support those installations? How are they going to make sure that they're running properly, that they're connected to the business process? Those are, that's a SI white space, huge. Guys, we yeah. have to wrap it up right now, but I just end on, you know, we'll get everyone go a little lightning round, quick soundbite on the, the phrase with them, which stands for what's in it for me. So if I'm a partner, I'm a customer, I look at Amazon, I think what's in it for me? Yeah. Yeah. What's in it for me as a, as a, as a customer? Like, what do I get out of this? Well, yeah, yeah. Ha having done like more than 100 data center audits and I've seen what mess out, messes out there and having done quite a few migrations to cloud, um, migrations are the messy, messiest piece, right? And it doesn't matter if you're migrating 10% or 20 or 30, it doesn't matter that how much you're migrating. It's a messy piece and you cannot do with our partners um, that work actually. You need that know-how. You need to infuse that that uh, education into into your organization. How to consume cloud? How to um, make sense of it? How you change your processes and how you train your people? So it touches all the products, people, and processes. So uh, all three all right. tiers. Uh, you got to have partners on on your side to, hey, to make it. Hey, hey, I'll go quick. And Tim, I'll give you the last word. Complexity is cash. Chaos is cash. Follow the complexity, you'll make cash. Yeah, you said it, Dave. I think any way that you can help an enterprise uh, simplify, and if you're the enterprise, if you're the customer, look for those partners that are going to help you simplify the journey over time. That's where the opportunity really lies. Okay, guys, expert power panel here on Cube Live program, part of AWS reInvent virtual coverage, bringing you all the analysis from the experts. Digital transformation is here. What's in it for me as a partner and customer? Help me make some money, master complexity, and serve my customer. This is theCUBE, thanks for watching. Thank you. From around the globe, it's theCUBE.